So, how can we tell the difference between a real smile and a fake smile? Many people say you can tell a real smile by the eyes. But what do you look for in the eyes? It's hard to describe, but if you break it down, sometimes people go, well, it's the crow's feet wrinkles, I guess. Fake smiles, you tend to smile with your mouth. But real smiles, you tend to use a lot more muscles in the face. You tend to bunch up the cheeks. Okay, this is a little bit indulgent. This is a photo of my son. That's a fake smile. Now, this one is a genuine smile. I'm pretty sure you can see the difference. If not, focus on the eyes. Now, where's sadness? There it is. In cartoons or comics, sadness is communicated with an upside down smile, a downturned mouth. That's not what people's mouths typically do when they're sad. In fact, it's not really communicated through the mouth that much. Sadness is probably the hardest one to spot. It's more in the eyes, the eyebrows. It's one that people find quite hard to spot. I don't know from an evolutionary point of view why, because what we do know about sadness, what we know about depression, is that having people around you is hugely helpful. Why are we not equipped to communicate our sadness better then? You can see little kids when they're trying to communicate sadness. They really amp it up. They pout their lip. They do all sorts of things that really communicate their sadness. Adults, they're too cool to do that. So let's keep going. This face shows disgust. You can see an evolutionary function for this. If there's something toxic in the environment, then you should screw up your nose. You should button your mouth up. You don't want anything coming in. Surprise? Again, you can see an evolutionary function here. The eyebrows are wide open. The eyebrows are high. Your eyes are wide open. Your mouth is open. Why would you do that? Well, it kind of makes sense. If something novel is there in the environment and you have to prepare for that fight or flight kind of response, be ready. Big breath, eyes wide open, ready to go. Fear is a little bit like surprise, but not as exaggerated. The eyes might not be as wide and the mouth might not be as open and the eyebrows not as high. Then anger. Anger is often communicated through the mouth, through the snarling expression, but probably more through the eyes. The eyes give us the death stare. If you have to break down the death stare, what is it? You know when you're getting one, you don't have to think about it. Actually, when you break it down, it's kind of subtle. It's like you shorten your eyes. You narrow your eyes a little bit. Not much, probably millimetres for a short time, and you don't blink. You stare directly at someone. Pretty subtle when you think about it, but really efficient communication, right? It can be difficult to break down all of this because it doesn't happen like that. It just tends to happen instinctively. You know when someone's giving you a death stare. You know when someone's happy. You know when someone's disgusted. You don't have to go through what all of their face parts are doing, what their eyes, their mouth and their nose are doing. You just know.